Coming up on Ag Week TV, what does the region's abundance of precipitation in recent weeks mean for area growers? We'll get an official perspective. Warm winter is part of the reason some sugar beet growers are losing money this year. And ideas for eating more of one of the region's biggest crops as we celebrate National Soy Foods Month. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. After getting off to an early start, rain and wind slowed planting considerably the past two weeks for many around the region. Extension meteorologist and North Dakota assistant state climatologist Daryl Richardson joins us now to give us some perspective on all the recent moisture. Daryl, what's your biggest takeaway from the recent rains? I think the first one was very beneficial. You know, people sometimes forget that April, we don't average that much rain, only about an inch, inch and a half. So the first one was really good. It set the stage for a good growing season, getting the planting done, the moisture that they needed. But as been the case so frequently in recent years, the second one was probably too much of a good thing. You know, so now state totals in the region are you know anywhere from two to three, four hundred percent of normal. And you know, we've had you know two, three, four inches of rain. In other words, in many parts of North Dakota so far. So really, what that has done is taken what would have been an early planting season, and really I think in many ways pushed it to where we're probably gonna end up planting a lot of things near average this year. And you will also notice, you know, this is two, 300% of normal uh, throughout the course of the state. And the heaviest rains in many ways fell where perhaps they needed it the most. There was some drought concerns, especially out in Stutzman County, uh, down through Northern South Dakota, but that has all ended. And the rains for the most part this month, the heaviest for, from percent of normal have been in North Dakota. You get down to Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, it's been a little bit drier in those areas, but they've also had a lot of rain this winter. So really much of the traditional corn soybean belts are doing very well on moisture. If anything now, the concerns are going to be too much. You know, will we be able to get into the fields? Okay, and with these rains, Daryl, does this put an end to the D word? I do believe so. And you know, and that D word is always that scary word for dry, you know, and it's drought. And there were some concerns, and I would not be surprised if we gradually dried up a little bit as we go through the growing season, but I think these rains has pretty much ended any concern for that probably at least for the next six to eight weeks. I really think May and June, we will do okay on moisture. If we're going to have problems with La Nina coming, it would probably be the second half of the growing season. All right, Daryl Richardson, our weather guru, thanks again for mm -hmm. joining us today. In this week's Crop Stop, Mikkel Pates travels to eastern South Dakota, where rain had things on hold. David Olson farms near Haytai with his two sons. They farm about 3,000 acres of corn and soybeans. They got about 600 acres of corn planted, but the recent cold, windy, wet weather has slowed them down. After this rain uh, blows over here and dries up, um, we plant beans in 15-inch rows with the air drill, so that'll be leaving the yard here uh, as soon as the, this rain and the dries off again, and uh, we'll plant corn and beans at the, at the same time. Olson says the practice of strip tilling has increased his corn yields by about 15%. He says they've been doing it for about 10 years and it's becoming more common in his part of the state. Sugar beet growers for Mindac Farmers Co-op are facing some tough losses. The company, based in Wapaton, cut gross payments for beets to $35 a ton for the 2015 crop. That means most Mindac growers will lose money. Michael Pates talked to Mindac's president to find out more. Dry beets going into the piles last fall and one of the warmest winters on record have cut the expected beet payment by $250 per acre this year at Mindac Farmers Cooperative. The discards uh, and then the uh, reduced quality of the beets that we had to process in general has had a significant impa impact on not only our, our factory operations, but also the resulting crop payment because there's simply less sugar produced from this crop than what we had expected or budgeted for back in October. Mindac President Kurt Wickstrom says the year started out well, a strong yield at 26 and a half tons an acre. 
In October, MINDAC projected payments of $46.50 a ton, but by April it was down to $35. When we first moved into the fully frozen beets the early part of March, we actually saw that a little bit of a bump in sugar content and an increase in quality. So we thought, okay, we're going to be able to preserve the projected crop payment of $40 per ton at that time. We kept monitoring the quality of the beets and about two weeks into the fully frozen beets, it became apparent that they weren't holding. The companies had to dump more than 200,000 tons of beets. Most were spread on fields and 50,000 tons went for cattle feed. Wickstrom says that that's among the worst they've seen. He says that they were looking at ways to cut these losses in the future, including lowering the maximum harvest temperature to 60 degrees and increasing the ventilation in the piles. We've chosen now for next fall to invest uh, approximately $6 million in ventilating three additional piles for long-term storage. So with, that, with those three additional piles ventilated, uh, about 70% of our long-term beet storage next year will be, will be ventilated. For AgWeek TV at Wapita, North Dakota, this is Mikkel Pates. American Crystal Sugar of Moorhead expects to pay $44 a ton. Crystal has more ventilation systems and equipment that allows them to process poor quality beets. Mindac plans to meet with shareholders in May when planting is done to talk about the season and what improvements can be made. Who do you turn to with an ag question? We'll hear from a longtime extension agent next. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. North Dakota soybean farmers put food on tables all over the world, including their own. That's why it's important that we produce healthy, safe, affordable food. It's also important that we keep up with demand. Today's farmer feeds 155 people per year. Compare that to a farmer only two generations ago who produced enough for just 26. Most North Dakota farms are still family owned and operated because our care of the land that feeds the world today is our children's legacy for tomorrow. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Their custom-built fertilizer systems are the crown jewel of the Total Ag lineup. Total Ag systems come with a fully customizable fill system, and the variable rate hydraulic drive system works with John Deere displays for real-time feedback and complete fertilizer monitoring. Total Ag's field-tested design allows precise control and accurate application in your fields for better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. When you need electricity way out here, you better get yourself one mighty long extension cord. Or better yet, a portable Honda generator from Home of Economy. Rugged, dependable, and so quiet, you won't miss a sound. Pick one up today at the guaranteed lowest price, only at Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. The extension service is a valuable resource for producers, but like many organizations, it's seen extensive changes in recent years. Recently, Jonathan Knutson talked to a longtime extension veteran and farmer who loves what he does. If you're involved in ag, you're familiar with the extension service, and you probably know someone like Jim Stordahl. I think the most enjoyable part for me is being presented with a problem or a situation and being able to use our resources and provide answers to whether it be homeowners, farmers, or any of our clients and provide them with information that hopefully is without bias. I find it very resourceful in 
no matter what we're looking at, I guess there's various reasons that we would call and, and the seminars that they've put on in various places we've gone to have been great. Extension has been around for a very long time and our goal is to provide information that has some research backing to help homeowners, farm owners, and uh, to solve problems. Agriculture is always changing, but people like Jim Stordahl right are always to here to give answers. We continue to farm the entire time we're here too. Um, the farming brings a very positive aspect to the job and the job brings a positive aspect to the farm. They're very complementary. Well, having a farm, I think, uh, enables me to, to keep up with some of the issues that many other farmers are dealing with. So it's been, it's been a wonderful experience having the opportunity to do both. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Stordahl says although he gets stumped on a weekly basis, it's seldom extension can't come up with an answer eventually. He also says technology has been a huge help in this job, especially with smaller staff sizes becoming more common. Several months after some farmers received no payments in the ARC County program, advocates are working to secure what they say is millions of dollars in lost payments. Representatives of the North Dakota Corn Growers Association met with ag officials in Washington recently. The organizations say farmers lost tens of thousands of dollars in payments because not enough of them completed surveys from the National Ag Statistics Service. Progressive Ag Law of Fargo is also working on the problem. Tom Lilja is a risk management specialist with Progressive Ag. He says the firm is focusing on Logan and Lamore counties in North Dakota and then will apply that data to other counties and crops. Logan and Lamore counties were the glaring example where they received zero payments, where uh, neighboring counties had maximum payments or even in some cases half of the maximum payments. So uh, we're just trying to see if those numbers were correct or incorrect. Others are looking into similar problems in Kansas and Colorado. The FSA has revised yields in two Colorado counties, and farmers there have received maximum payments, but many cases are still unresolved. Up next on Ag Week TV, sun to get the planting started again? Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, celebrating one of the region's top crops with some healthy recipes. What I believe sets us apart is the way our products are crafted. Every frame has to have a precision to it that you don't see in other brands. It's what makes it a true Minn Kota window. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're gonna find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or add it to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Micro Essentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Micro Essentials, get more from every acre. North Country Marketing is your weed and mosquito control headquarters. Carrying the Easy Rider ATV mounted sprayer, pole type ATV sprayers, three point sprayers with six foot to 30 foot booms, utility vehicle mounted sprayers, 48 inch pole type weed rollers, and the new 72 inch model. We also carry walk behind weed rollers and estate sprayers. 
North Country Marketing has the sprayers you need for this season and we ship anywhere. Contact North Country Marketing toll free or visit us at northcountrymarketing.biz. It's hard not to take pride in what I do. I think everyone here sees the value in what they're creating. We work hard to make every window a true Minkota window. My, how things have changed. It's just been a couple of weeks. Let's go back to the middle of April when the surface water monitor that's produced by the University of Washington, a fairly new index that models surface water, which is a surprisingly difficult thing to really get a handle on, was showing most of North Dakota, most of South Dakota, except for basically the Yankton to Sioux Falls area. In a, in a fairly dry situation, the white meaning fairly neutral, meaning about average for mid-April, and it's usually kind of dry in mid-April, but a lot of North Dakota and northern South Dakota was just flat out dry. Two weeks of rain to the tune of one to four inches, and now it's suddenly gone to quite wet. The Sioux Falls area is still quite wet, but one to four inches of rain in April, that's not really out of the ordinary unusual, but it certainly is not the sort of thing that happens every spring. It has turned North Dakota and much of South Dakota from quite dry to actually quite wet, thank you. And it's just really kind of amazing how quickly that turned about. Why does this happen? It has to do with something called the Arctic Oscillation. All winter long we've been talking about El Nino, but in fact El Nino is not the only thing that gave us a fairly warm dry winter. And of course I don't include the Sioux Falls area into that because the Sioux Falls area had snow. But from there southward it's a little bit of a different situation with El Nino. El Nino in conjunction with the Arctic Oscillation, which is a circulation in the upper atmosphere around the low pressure system near the pole, when that is in the positive category, that particular branch of jet stream wind tends to go pretty fast and the mid latitudes our region tends to not get too many arctic air outbreaks well over the last couple of weeks we're still in el nino although it's weakening but the arctic oscillation has slowed way down the low has gotten much weaker which allows arctic air to meander a bit and at times drip down into the northern latitudes it is now strongly negative and we have this sudden change so how does that affect the jet stream the polar jet is much stronger now and much more wavy and it's been locked for a while now it's beginning to get more progressive that will continue this week a little ridge of high pressure will actually give us a touch of warm weather. The forecast this week, it's going to be uh, fairly dry across the northern plains, some wet weather Pacific Northwest. The stormy weather down south will mostly be along the Gulf Coast and along the Appalachians and eastward. Corn Belt typical weather, northern plains warm and dry, but most notably this week will be fairly warm. Next week, I don't see a lot of really unusual weather anywhere. This rain in the middle of the country may not be extraordinary, but across the northern plains looks like we'll be turning just a little bit cooler again, and that's the second week of May. I don't, I don't know that the wet weather will continue, but the wet weather the past two weeks has certainly changed things. This week warm and dry, next week cooler, still probably dry. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. We believe in a fair and balanced approach to state and federal regulation. Proposed changes to OSHA's anhydrous ammonia policy, EPA's Waters of the U.S., the Clean Air Act, and endangered species are a few examples of what we are facing. The one-size approach doesn't work for North Dakota. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring wants to work with you to protect our state. Go to our website to see the latest issues that affect not only agriculture today, but for future generations. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins, 
With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Ag Week TV, sponsored by Peterson Farm Seed. Welcome back to Ag Week TV. I'm Rose Dunn. Maybe you didn't know it, April is National Soy Foods Month. So to celebrate, joining me now is soy expert Linda Funk, and she pre prepared a delicious soy lunch. You know, it's just so much fun to see how you can start adding soy from beginning to end. A dip or a salad dressing to stuff pasta shells, edamame salad, a pudding pie, with soft silken tofu, voila, you got a dessert. Honestly, uh, several of us at the table commented that they liked your soy version of some of these foods better uh, than the traditionally yeah. made versions of it. Yeah. The pasta stuffed shells are made with soft silken tofu. Really important when you start working with tofu is understanding the various types. If you want it to blend in and be soft and silken, you want to use the silken tofu. Tetra pack, shelf stable. If you want it to keep its shape, you want the water packed tofu, firm or extra firm, because it won't crumble, it'll keep its shape. So that's really key. Uh, this was interesting. You switched out what might ordinarily be made with sour cream or cream Correct. cheese. Correct. This is a tofu vegetable dip or salad dressing. You can use it either or. So again, you start with a soft silken and then you add whatever herbs or even those flavor packets, the French onion or the ranch dip, to it, and voila, you've got a salad dressing or you have a dip for your vegetables. Again, you're sneaking a little bit of protein into something that might not have as much protein in no it. No one will ever be the wise. Nobody will know. Edamame, a lot of us love this just like this as a snack but you turned it into a healthy salad? This salad is the fastest thing ever. Sweet corn, edamame shelled, red pepper for color, and then balsamic vinegar dressing, along with a little cumin. Healthy soy protein it makes you feel full longer. So then if you start eating edamame in the shell as a quick afternoon snack, or soy nuts, it'll bridge the gap to get to dinner without consuming a lot of high calorie, high fat foods. And today you're Piece de resistance was this chocolate yes. pie. Use the soft silken, but the firm tofu. So the firm, is once you mix in all the, the different ingredients, when you put it in that shell or in a pie crust, it's going to firm up so you can actually cut it. If you use the soft silken in that, you wouldn't be able to cut it like a pie. And as we learn more and more about its health benefits, high protein, you spoke about anti-cancer properties. Absolutely. Everybody's interested in, in those kind of things. It's heart healthy. And that's what started the whole movement of soy foods is the FDA health claim that states if you consume 25 grams of soy protein in the context of a healthy diet, it may reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. And that's the number one issue with both men and women. All right, thank you very much, Linda. We will Put a link to some of her great recipes on our website, agweek.com, and we'll be back with more Ag Week TV right after this. Ahead on Ag Week TV, with declining cattle prices, it's more important than ever to keep your calves healthy. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. 
All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. Progressive Ag Law has partnered with many farmers on Ag Legal Matters, and now they're ready to fight for you. According to the National Grain and Feed Association, when Syngenta varieties were rejected by China in 2013, farmers lost 11 to 50 cents a bushel due to the price drop. Since all U.S. corn farmers were hurt, every corn farmer has a potential claim for financial damages against Syngenta. You shouldn't have to pay for Syngenta's mistake. Every progressive ag lawyer has a strong background in agricultural law and is ready to stand with you against Syngenta, who pursued their profits at your expense. All costs are paid for by the legal team on a contingency basis. They don't get paid unless you get paid. Visit them online at progressiveaglaw.com or call 1-800-450-1404. Progressive Ag Law. Ag Law is our focus. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. With a decline in calf prices, NDSU Livestock Extension Specialist Gerald Stucka has some thoughts on the importance of calf health. We've seen a, a considerable decline in calf prices, in fat cattle prices. So the reason this calf health issue is so important is that we've got to save as many calves as we can. If you look at some of the numbers of, of what's the percent of calves we lose from birth to weaning, it can be anywhere from two and a half, even up to 5%. And that's, that's too many. We need to do better than that. We need to make sure that we're monitoring these herds as often as we can and get out there and find these calves that are needing treatment. And we need to do all we can to prevent them in the first place. And, you know, some of the tools that we have today to prevent disease, of course, are our vaccination protocols, primarily for respiratory disease. But again, you need to work closely with your veterinarian to design those protocols. When you give them, what you give them, do they need a booster or don't they need a booster to prevent some of these highly preventable diseases. Calf scours, calf pneumonia, enterotoxemia. In a time when market value of calves has declined, the idea is to save as many as we can to, you know, to at least enhance that bottom line that, that we're after. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.